We all love these protagonists beating the shit out of a thousand year old antagonist with the power of friendship. But you know what's better? Seeing the protagonists act as villain who take on the entire world by themselves. In this video, we shall talk about the top 10 anime in which the protagonist is a villain. Before we begin, I'd like to clarify that these anime are in no particular order. Everything is based on my personal opinion, so don't go bashing me around in the comments. Alright, without any further ado, let's dive right into it. First up on this list, we have Death Note. How can you not include this anime on this list? That's just impossible. There isn't a single weeb who hasn't watched it or at least heard about it. The anime revolves around the story of Light Yagami, who comes across a mysterious notebook titled The Death Note. Following some further prying into it, Light discovers that he can kill people if he just lists their name on it, and from that point onward, Light decides to ensure justice in this world by getting rid of all these criminals by himself. In the beginning, his intentions were quite good, but as time passes by, Light begins to consider himself a god who can lay judgment on the people. The anime raises an important question of whether a single individual can pass judgment over others his actions and eventually answers it by showcasing Light's tragic fate that results from his own actions. Death Note is one of those shows that I'd highly recommend to some newbies. It's just so entertaining that it keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. The animation might seem a little bit old school, but it fits well with the overall dynamics of the show. On number 9, we have Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion. Lelouch L'Empourage is perhaps the most iconic anime characters of all time. There is just no way that you can convince me otherwise. Code Geass follows the story of Lelouch L'Empourage, who attempts to take down the kingdom Britannia and free Japan from its grasp. In the beginning of his journey, Lelouch gains a mysterious ability known as Gias that allows him to force anyone to do anything he wants, but only once. Using this ability, Lelouch leads the charge on Britannia. In most cases, such actions would be considered heroic, but in Lelouch's scenario, he was deemed a villain even by his own followers. In reality, Lelouch is that sort of person who is willing to betray and sacrifice his own men for the sake of his goal. He does not shy away from lying to people and even using them for his own goals. Even his appearance makes him look more like a villain. Some of y'all might deem the art style a little bit weird, but trust me, once you get used to it, it'll be a smooth ride. Next up, we have Helsing Ultimate. You'll see a lot of old school anime on this list, I guess it was just trendy back then to portray MCs as villains, and it makes sense when you look at Helsing's protagonist, Eldacard. Eldacard is basically a vampire whose sole purpose is to get rid of his own kind. For any other character, these actions would have been deemed as anti-hero or even as hero, but in Alucard's case, it's different. His reason behind killing all these vampires is not something related to morals or anything like that. He just enjoys killing, and that's it. Another interesting thing about Alucard is that he not only kills vampires, he viciously murders humans alike. I mean, it's a good thing that he doesn't discriminate between the two, but yeah, murdering humans is going a little bit too extreme. Helsing Ultimate is one of those shows that will just keep you hooked. You wouldn't want to miss a single second of it, and in case you haven't watched it, give it a shot. You'll love it. Saga of Tanya the Evil I know some of y'all were waiting for me to feature this anime on this list. To be honest, preparing a list of villainous protagonists without this one is literally impossible. I mean, just look at the title. It literally portrays the MC being evil. Saga of Tanya the Evil follows the story of a Japanese salaryman who gets reincarnated into the body of a 10-year-old European girl, Tanya von der Rorschaf. Tanya has just one goal, and that is to lead a peaceful life, and for that purpose, she would do anything. To achieve her goals, Tanya even leads her empire to near world domination. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I mean here. Her intelligence and cruelty is so mighty that no one stands a chance against her. It makes sense that she earned the nickname Devil of the Rhine. Seeing a 10 year old child killing people might be weird for some people, but I would recommend y'all watch it if you like evil main characters. On number 5, we have Overlord. The Sekai genre is quite popular when it comes to protagonists acting as villains by becoming demon lords, but one anime that stands out to me the most is Overlord. The protagonist of Overlord, Mamunga, is your average gamer who gets stuck in his favorite DMMORPG game, and that too as his in game character, Mamunga. With no way to leave the game and due to a misunderstanding, Mamunga decides to strive for world domination and take everything for himself. 
He starts this off by renaming himself Ains Uol Gaon. Despite being a human himself, his in-game character's race being an undead makes sure that he stays away from humanity as he commits some questionable acts like killing thousands of people for no apparent reason. As time passes, we witness Ains gradually transform from that of an unconfident and somewhat cowardly human to that of a cruel and evil king of the undead. Well, you can argue that the progression of this show is a bit too slow, but it is still one of the best isekai out there. With over four seasons being released till date, you have a lot to look forward to. 91 Days is the next anime to feature on this list, perhaps the most underrated anime I've come across in recent years. It follows the story of a guy named Angelo Lagusa who had witnessed the murder of his entire family by the hands of the Venetti family. With no other option left, Angelo leaves behind everything and takes up a new identity, Avilio Bruno. Fast forward seven long years, Angelo finally gets the opportunity to take revenge as he comes across a letter informing him about the Venetti's family son, Nero. Angelo plans to befriend Nero using the skills he had honed all these years and eventually take his revenge. Angelo becomes a villain for the Venetti family as he gets rid of all those men who were involved in the brutal murder of his family. I don't understand why people hate this show, the animation, storyline, and even the characters everything is perfect. Before reading the reviews, I would suggest that you give it a shot yourself. You're gonna love it. On number 3, we have Terror in Resonance. I've always been wondering why there are so many experimental institutes in Japan. I mean, what do they even want to achieve with them? Well, 12 and 9 are also survivors of these experimental institutes and go on to formulate a terrorist cell known as Sphinx. Well, this is quite acceptable since these children went through hell and most of them even failed to survive owing to all that drugging and experiments. 12 and 9, however, somehow managed to survive and now all they want is revenge. Their plan is to steal an atomic bomb and wipe out everyone involved in that experiment. Throughout the anime, the show delivers some powerful messages as to what derives a human to perform such heinous acts. The protagonists of this anime are outright evil. They feel no sympathy whatsoever and would do anything to taste revenge. Elfin Light is the next anime to feature on this list. The protagonist of this show, Lucy, has the best reason to be a villain. Being born as a Declonius, which is a special breed of humans, Lucy gets experimented on by the government and is discriminated against by the society as well. Traumatized by all this, Lucy unleashes a torment of bloodshed on her captors when she gets a chance to escape. She even kills the parents of her childhood friend out of jealousy. Lucy also receives a head injury during her escape that leaves her with a split personality and she comes across two college students who take her in. Little did they know, they are literally playing with fire. Elephant Light is extremely underrated and once again, don't trust the ratings, just watch the show yourself. Attack on Titan Some of y'all might call it overrated or shun the ending, but you can't deny the fact that AOT is one of the greatest anime of all time. Jaw-dropping fights, the storyline, and even the animation, everything is perfect. But what makes it even more fascinating is the protagonist, Eren Yeager. In a world where massive humanoid creatures known as titans threaten the existence of humanity, humans are trapped inside huge walls. Despite the lingering threat, things have been peaceful for quite some time, but everything changes as the titans manage to breach the wall of Shiganshina. A young boy named Eren loses his mother right in front of his eyes and this ignites immense hatred inside him against the titans. He wants to get rid of the titans from the face of the earth and joins the survey corps. Now, this is where things get interesting. During his first mission, Eren mysteriously turns into a titan himself but unlike those mad creatures, he can control himself. This marks the beginning of Eren's story. However, at this point, Eren is not yet a villain. Spoiler alert, he eventually learns that these titans were once humans and as a matter of fact, humans are the ones behind it all. This literally changes everything and triggers Eren's transformation into the greatest antagonist of all time. The last anime to feature on this list is Psychopaths. Some of y'all might not agree with this inclusion, but before y'all comment something bad, hear me out. Psychopaths is set in a world where Japan has implemented a unique system known as the Siebel system to uphold justice. This system determines the threat level of citizens and grades them accordingly. Individuals known as enforcers are the ones that manage the system. 
The protagonist of the show, Akane Sunemori, also works as an enforcer, but she soon realizes that this system is flawed and attempts to convince the other people as well. This basically means that she has to work against her own comrades and act as an antagonist. Akane embarks on a journey of self-discovery and rebellion against the system she previously believed in as she digs more into the cases and starts to doubt their morality and efficacy. That's it folks, there are lots of other anime as well that feature protagonists as well as villains, but we can talk about them in some other videos. Let me know in the comments which anime out of these is your favorite, also make sure to like, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on anything.